check this out. NASA to send a new $23 million toilet to the International Space Station. $23 million. That That thing... <laughs> I almost said some a dirty joke. Um, yeah, look at that. That's uh, some amazing... Look at... Dose pump. Enable. Disable. <laughs> All right, let's read about it. <laughs> NASA is sending a new and improved toilet... Uh, much improved, excuse me, toilet up to the International Space Station this week. Why it matters? The new toilet is designed to be easier to use for female astronauts while in orbit. Awesome. Very nice. How it works? The new $23 million toilet called the Universal Waste Management System incorporates feedback from astronauts that should make it more pleasant for everyone to do their business in space. The current toilets on the space station make use of a tube and a funnel with a seat, but the toilet's design make it hard to use both simultaneously. Oh, so like you can't do number one and two at the same time. Um, all right. Legit. Legit. Makes sense. <laughs> the team behind the new toilet incorporated the tube so it can be used with the seat, making it easier for female astronauts to use. The UWMS is also easier to maintain than the current toilets in, Europe, uh, in, in orbit, meaning astronauts will need to spend less time cleaning than they do currently. Yeah, because you don't want poop molecules everywhere. I don't. I mean, who wants poop molecules everywhere? I mean, I'd be ripping them. probably lurking in chat right now, going, hey, 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 yes, yes, because I guess when you when you fart and you you smell a fart, it's poop molecules. I don't know if is that true. I, I don't know if that's actually true or not. Can I? Get a fact? I don't have a fact checker. Um, that's all right. <laughs> What's next? NASA hopes to eventually use the toilet on missions to deep space des uh, destinations like the moon and Mars, which makes sense because we are definitely going to the moon. Uh, 2024 is supposedly the next time we're going to be going. Um, uh, when the astronauts have to go, we want to allow them to boldly go. <laughs> I see what you did there. Uh, that was from Jim Fuller, who helped uh, develop the new toilet. Uh, said during a press briefing last week. The toilet is expected to launch to the station Thursday aboard Cygnus spacecraft from Virginia. And you can watch it live right there. This is on Axios. And uh, I have some more space things to talk about because it, it's just kind of cool. I like, I, I love rapping about space. So I want to talk about this leak. All right. So there was a leak, actually. Uh, I don't know if this was... When, when, let's see, when, did this, uh, when did this happen? I think it was a few weeks ago. So they, they, there was a leak that... They had to all isolate, I think it was in, in the Soyuz, uh, the Russian uh, capsule, and they had to close it off while they tried to do run different tests to find out where the leak happened. And uh, let's read about it. Uh, uh, Monday night, the Expedition 63 crew was awakened by flight controllers to continue troubleshooting a small leak on the International Space Station that appeared to grow in size. Ground analysis of the modules test tested overnight have isolated the leak location in the main work area of the Ves uh, Zvezda service module. I don't know if I said that right, but that's cool. Additional work is underway to precisely locate the source of the leak. The leak, which has been investigated for several weeks, poses no immediate danger to the crew at the current leak rate and only a slight deviation to the crew's uh, schedule. NASA astronaut and S station commander Chris Cassidy and Roscoe Roscosmos, Roscosmos cosmonaut. I never heard that. Roscosmos. What does that mean? I'm going to look into that. Anatoly Ivan Nishin and Ivan Wagner were instructed to move into the Russian segment to collect data at various locations in the Russian modules. The size of the leak identified overnight has been uh, attributed to a temporary temperature change aboard the station with the overall rate of leak remained unchanged, remaining unchanged. Previous leak checks were con uh, conducted in the U.S., European, and Japanese modules in the U.S. segment of the station. Check this out. I actually have a picture. This is one of the holes. It might be the hole. I don't know, but this was posted after all this went down. Look at that. Actually, it's unfortunate because you don't really get a good um, judge of how big the hole is, but they say it says here that it was made by a meteorite the size of a grain of sand and actually when i was talking to the space experts last saturday we actually talked about this about how if you throw a, a bag of sand into the orbit of, of earth it would decimate 
many, many of the, I think there's like 3,500 satellites at the moment or 4,000 satellites total. And it's pretty crazy. Like one grain of sand can I'm knock out a satellite. It could hit, you know, a blow up battery. I don't know what kind of batteries they've got, but it can imagine, you can see that it would just rip open a big hole in a potentially, especially when someone's living on the ISS. So this is actually on the ISS and it continues. Um, the astronauts on the ISS are hunting for a source of another mysterious air leak. This is actually from today. So they're actually looking for another leak. So these, these leaks are happening, which, and I can only assume it's from these, these tiny little particles. Cause they are, they're moving like 30,000 miles an hour, 25,000 miles an hour, somewhere, somewhere in that range, whipping around the earth really quickly in their own UFO, you know, well it's identified. So IFO, uh, ISS. And uh, let's read about this. So in the middle of the night on Monday, two cosmonauts and one astronaut on the International Space Station were woken up by a call from Mission Control. They were told that there was a leak in a module on the Russian side of the station responsible for leaking precious air out of the $150 billion spacecraft. That's a lot. Into the vacuum of space. They were now being tasked to hunt for the precise location of the leak and see if they could patch it up. As the leak had seemed to grow alarmingly bigger, an erroneous reading later attributed to the temperature change in the cabin. Oh, okay. So that was actually false because in the previous article, which was written earlier and, and that was actually the good news. They said, Oh my goodness. Sorry. Let's try to find out what the bad news is. The ISS had been dealing with the air leak for over a year. Wow. I didn't even realize it actually had been a, a year long process to deal with this leak first discovered in September, 2019, when NASA and its partners observed a slight dip in air pressure. The problem has never posed a threat to the crews on board. It was only in August after ground crews noticed the leak was getting worse that the investigation was launched to finally find the source and remedy the problem. Since then, American astronaut Chris Cassidy and Russian cosmonauts Anatoly uh, uh, Ivan Ivanshin, Ivanishin, there it is, and Ivan Wagner have spent multiple weekends hunkered into a single module while they close the rest of the station's hashes and make measurements of the air pressure. So this is what the, the other article was talking about. And that led up to the Monday night search party here. The ISS always loses a tiny bit of air and that simply requires replacing the nitrogen and oxygen tanks during regularly, uh, regular resupply missions. But the fact that the leak was getting worse would require the tanks to be replaced sooner than expected. It also means the hole was allowing the leak, uh, that was allowing the, the leak may have gotten bigger and could grow still if not dealt with soon these leaks are predictable sergey uh Krykalov, uh the executive director of russia's crude space program in a televised comment what's happening now is more than the standard leakage and naturally if it lasts a long time it will require supplies of extra air to the station so they're going to have to get some air out there so this is a tweet from chris cassidy talking about it strangely the data did not point us to any particular location Yesterday and today, Anatoly and I have been checking all the windows, window seals, uh, not Navy seals, uh, for any indication of a leak using an ultrasonic leak detector. So far, no luck finding the source, but it looks like we will try again with the module isolation this weekend. No harm or risk to us as the crew, but it is important to find the leak. We are not wasting valuable air. Yeah, exactly. So that is, um, that's, that's it for... Um, that, that segment, I mean, it, it goes on and we, they keep talking about it, but that's pretty much the information that uh, we got out of there. I just, I, I, I want to show this incredible photograph of the future. Check this out. This is from Eric X space making life multi-planetary, uh, planetary. This look at this, this is starship. That is, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, the first starship, I mean, we had the space shuttle but the, the space shuttle couldn't get off the earth by itself. It couldn't launch and land. This is the first starship, like real starship, something that can go from the, you know, land on earth, fly into space and come back down and land. This is incredible. We seriously are at the, f the beginning of the future. We are witnessing this shift to going into space. The conversations that I had, uh, with these space experts that I had on my show the past couple of weeks has been incredible. I, 
I feel like I, I got a nice window into the economics of space travel. Um, and if you want to check out those, they're on my channel. You can check them out. And incredible conversations, but it's happening. We're actually there. We are here witnessing the future of space, and it is incredible. So this here is the Starship by Elon Musk, and I am so excited about it. I can't, I can't express how excited I am. It's one day maybe I'll, I'll get to go to space, and I would love that. And if you, if you have an in, let me know because I would love to go. <laughs>